In this presentation, I want to explain payoff tables. So I will give the steps for calculating payoff tables and I will also solve examination questions as work example. So what do we mean by payoff tables? A payoff table is a table that illustrates all possible profits or losses. Tables or table that illustrates all possible profits or losses. Now, a payoff table can also be called the profit table. You either call it payoff table or you call it profit table. A payoff table is a useful way to represent and analyze a range of possible outcomes and variety of possible responses. I want to calculate possible profits or possible losses at each of the possible outcomes. So what is a profit? To calculate profit, you have the total revenue, total revenue minus variable cost, total variable cost, if any, total variable cost, if any, minus total fixed cost plus scrap value minus uh, cost in cure in disposing of. So, minus cost in cure in disposing of. So, total revenue is the product of price and quantity sold. Revenue is price and quantity sold. Minus total variable cost will be variable cost per unit multiplied by unit supply. Minus total fixed cost, if any. Plus scrap. You'll be given the scrap value. So, this is the formula for calculating the profit. So, this is the focus. This is our focus under this topic. Now, this formula will be better explained using the example. I, I want to know that the scrap, the amount you realize from the sales of a product as a scrap is different from the cost you incur in disposing it of. Where costs are incurred in disposing it of, the cost incurred in disposing of the item that is where there are excess supply. The cost incurred in disposing it of, we are going to subtract that. So, but scrap is the, maybe where the items, where the excess supply, maybe the number of units in excess supply, where it is to be sold at a scrap. That means that scrap will be an inflow to the entity. The amount realized from this scrap will be added. A scrap is a residue with a small recoverable value. That means the amount at which the product that is sold at a scrap, the amount at which it will be sold, will not be up to the normal selling price of the product. Example, Cement Co. is a company specializing in the manufacture of cement. A product used in the building industry. The company has found that when conditions are good, the demand for cement increases since more building work is able to take place. Last year, the weather was, good, was so good and the demand for cement was so great that Cement Co. was unable to meet demand. Cemento is now trying to work out the level of cement production for the coming year in order to maximize profits. The company doesn't want to miss out on the opportunity to earn profits by running out of cement again. However, it doesn't want to be left with large quantities of the, of the product unsold at the end of the year since it, de it deteriorates quickly 
and then has to be disposed of. The company has received the following estimates about the probable weather condition and corresponding demand, uh, corresponding demand levels for the coming year. We have weather, probability, and demand. When weather is good, probability is 25% and demand was 350,000 bucks. When weather condition was average, probability was 45% and demand is 280,000 bucks. Poor weather condition, probability of 30% and 200,000 bucks. Each bag of cement sells for 1,800 naira and costs 800 naira to make. If cement is unsold, at the end of the year, it has to be disposed of at a cost of 100 naira per bag. Cement Co. has decided to produce at one of the three levels of production to match forecast. To match forecast demand, it now has to be. It now has to decide which level of cement production to select. Required: A. Construct a payoff table to show all the possible profit outcomes. B. Decide the level of cement production the company should choose based on the following decision rules. 1. Maximum. 2. Maximus. 3. Expected value. You must justify your decision under each rule showing all necessary calculation. That is the question. Now, let's have the solution to the question. I told you that payoff table is the same as the profit table. Now let's construct the pay off table. Pay off table or profit table. So we have supply and demand. We have three possible outcomes. When demand is 350,000, when demand is 280,000, and when demand is 200,000. So we have demand 350,000, demand 280,000, and demand is 200,000. And then when supply is 350,000, when supply is 280,000, 280, thousand and when supply is two hundred thousand so you want to calculate the profit at each level now we can have supply and demand Then we also have excess, excess supply. We don't need excess demand. Excess supply is where supply exceeds demand. Where supply exceeds demand. That is excess supply. So we have Supply, demand, excess supply. I've told you that excess supply is where supply exceeds demand. That is where your supply is greater than demand. You don't need excess demand. Though excess demand is where demand exceeds the supply. So now, if you look at this table, where is supply 350,000? Here supply is 350,000. Here demand is 350,000. Supply 350,000. 
the man also 350,000. That means supply and demand are equal. They are at the point of equilibrium. Here, supply 350,000 and demand is 280,000. Supply 350,000, demand is 280,000. In this case, there is excess supply. Excess supply. Supply is greater than demand. Excess supply of 350,000 minus 280,000. Excess supply of 70,000. Here, supply is 350,000 and demand is 200,000. 350,000 is supply, demand is 200,000. Here, there is an excess supply of 150,000. The difference between supply and demand. Here, supply is 280,000, demand is 350,000. Supply 280,000, demand is 350,000. Here there is excess demand. I want you to know that in the case of excess demand, so your sales will be limited to, to your supply. That means you cannot sell 350,000 since your production is not up to 350,000. The number of units that will be sold in this case will be limited to 280,000. You cannot sell what you don't have. Here, demand. Customer demanded for 350,000 and you only supply 280,000. So it is the 280,000 you have available for sales. So your sales will be limited to 280,000. Here, supply is 280,000 and demand is also 280,000. Supply, 280,000. Demand is 280,000. Demand and supply is at the point of equilibrium. Here, supply is 280,000. Demand is 200,000. Supply is 280,000. Demand is 200,000. In this case, there is excess supply of 80,000 80, because supply is greater than demand. You have excess supply of 80,000. Now, the third position, supply is 200,000, while demand is 350,000. Supply is 200,000, demand is 350,000. Here, there is excess demand. That means your sales, in the case of excess demand, your sales will be limited to supply, which is 200,000. Your sales will be limited to 200,000 in the case of excess demand. So, then here you supply 200,000 and demand is 280,000. Supply is 200,000, demand is 280,000. In this case, there is an excess, excess supply, uh, excess demand rather. So in this case, this will be limited to supply of 200,000. You cannot sell up to 280,000 because you didn't have, all, you didn't produce up to 280,000. You cannot sell what you don't have. Then the third case, supply 200,000, demand 200,000. That means demand and supply are at the point of equilibrium. So we have equilibrium supply. Or equilibrium demand. Now, what will be the profit figure at each of the levels of production? You want to calculate the profit at each level of production. Is to estimate the profit. Profit is equal to revenue, that is your sales, less your variable cost. When you supply your variable cost, you get contribution. And if there are no other items or abnormal charges or fixed costs to deduct, so your profit will be revenue minus variable cost. Back to the question. 
you were told each bag of cement sells for 1,800. That is the selling price. And cost 800 naira to make, to make. This is the cost. If cement is unsold, at the end of the year, it has to be disposed of at a cost of 100 naira per bag. That means, if cement, you were told, if cement is unsold, no, the unsold cement will be, you will have unsold cement in the case of excess supply. So, it is in the case of excess supply that you will be having unsold cement. Remember, the selling price is 1.8 and the cost is 800 naira. And unsold cement, you pay 100 naira to dispose it of. This 100 naira, don't confuse dispose of. Cost. This is a cost, not the revenue, not the amount you are going to realize from the sales of the unsold one, but you are going to pay 100 naira to refuse disposal or waste management to dispose it of. So this is additional cost in the case of excess supply. So selling price 18 cost 800. Now let's calculate the profit now. Profit now, supply, demand now. Your, your demand now, 350,000 units were sold. 350,000 units times 1,800. 1,800 is the selling price. Minus your cost. Your cost is 800 naira times 350,000. 350,000 times 800. That is the cost. So this will give you to give us a uh, 350,000 to give us 350 million 350 million naira that is the profit on the sales of the cement so when 350 units were supplied and demand is 350,000 so your profit will be 350 million. Let me keep three zeros. So profit will be 350 million. So three zeros at the top. The second one, your demand is 280,000. That means sales revenue will be 280,000. The number of units sold is 280,000. At a price of 1,800. Minus the total unit produced is 350,000, and each unit costs you 800. 800 times 350,000 units produced. In this case, there is an excess supply of 70,000. This excess supply of 70,000 will be disposed of at a cost of 100 naira per bag. So, minus. 70,000 times 100. So, 280,000 times 1,800. 280,000 times 1,800. That gives us 504 million naira. Minus cost will be 800 times 350,000. That so, the difference between the two is 2 to 4,000. 70,000 times 100 minus 70,000 times 100. That gives us, so you have 217 million naira. So, the difference is 217 million. 217 million naira. The revenue from the number of units sold. The number of units sold is 200,000. We have 200,000 times 1,800 minus the cost. 800 times the number of units supplied, which is 350,000. Minus. See, there is excess supply. The excess supply of 150,000 will be disposed of at the cost of 100 naira per unit. So, what will be the profit? 200,000 
times 1,800 minus 800 times 350,000 minus 150,000 times 100. Then you have the profit of 65 million naira. 65 million naira profit. So, 65 million. Then, when 20,000 units are supplied and 350,000 units are demanded, supply is 280,000, why demand is 350,000? You, in this case, there is asset demand. You cannot be able to sell 350,000 because you cannot sell what you do not have. The number of units sold will be restricted or will be limited to the units supplied. Therefore, the revenue from 280,000, 280,000 will be sold, not 350,000, because you didn't have up to 350,000. So, the revenue from the unit supply, 1,800 per unit times 280,000 units, which will be sold, minus the cost of the 280,000 units supplied. 280,000 times 800. So, we have 1,800 times 280,000 minus 280,000 times 800. Then, the difference is profit of 280,000. 280 million. 280 million profit. Then, when the unit sold supply is 20,000 and the demand is 20,000, supply 20,000, demand is 20,000, revenue from the sales of 20,000 will be 20,000 times 1,800 minus cost of 280,000, 280,000 times 1,000, I mean times 800, then you have the profit. Profit of 280 million. 280 million naira. 280 million. When supply is 280,000 units and the number of units demanded is 200,000. In this case, there is excess supply. Supply exceeds demand. Revenue from the 200,000 units that will be sold, since demand is 200,000, that means 200,000 units will be sold. 200,000 times 1,800 minus the cost. The cost of the whole production or unit supply, which is 280,000 times 800 minus the excess supply of 80,000 will be disposed of. We have 80,000 at 100 Naira each. So we have 200,000 times 1,800 minus 280,000 times 800 minus 80,000 times 100, then you are left with 128 million naira, 128 million naira, so you have 128 million naira, and where the number of units supplied, the unit supply is 200,000, and demand is 350,000, Supply is 200,000, while demand is 350,000. 
So in this case, you cannot sell what you don't have. Since your supply, what you produce is not up to 350,000, that means your sales will be limited to 200,000. So sales of 200,000, 200,000 units times 1,800 minus the cost of the unit supply, 800 times the unit supply is 200,000. So, your profit will be what? 200 million, 200 million naira. 200 million naira. 200 million. And where the unit supply is 200,000, and 20,000 units were demanded. Supply is 200,000, 20,000 units were demanded. You cannot be able to sell up to 20,000 since your production is not up to 200, it's not up to 20,000. That means you will only sell 200,000. 200,000 times 1,800 minus 800 times 200,000. So that gives us 200 million as well. 200 million. So you have 200 million. Then we are, your supply is 200,000 units and demand is 200,000. So supply, 200,000, demand 200,000. Revenue, we have 200,000 times 1,800 minus 800 times 200,000. That will also give us 200 million. 200 million. So you have 200 million. This is our pay of table. Back to the requirement. Requirement A, you have to construct a pay of table to show all the possible profit outcomes. That is the solution to that. So this is our pay of table. Then, B, decide the level of cement production the company should choose based on the following decision rules. You have to choose, use the following criteria to choose uh, to make your decision. The first one is maximum. To learn this triple assessment, maximum, maximum and minimum regret, then watch my previous or earlier presentation on the topic. Now, for maximum, maximum criteria, the first thing is to choose the worst outcome first. What is the worst outcome? From the worst outcome, you now choose the highest. So, worst outcome. No, we are using maxi me. I think you start with the minimum. Minimum is the worst. The worst outcome is the minimum. Then under this supply, the minimum is 65,000. Here, the minimum is 128,000. And here, you have 200,000. You have chosen the minimum. Then, what is the maximum of the minimum? That is the requirement B1. So, uh, our maximum now, using maximum criteria, the maximum is 200,000. Therefore, your advice should be that they should supply 200,000 units. Supply 200,000 units on the basis of the maximum criteria. B2. You have to use the maxima criterion. Using maximas. The first thing is your max, which is talking about the maximum. That is, you choose the best outcome. 
When in 350,000 supply column, the best outcome is 350,000. I think the maximum is 350,000. 350 million. And in 280,000, the maximum profit is 280,000 or 280 million. In 200,000, the maximum is 200,000 or 200 million. Now, to choose the maximum of the maximum, the maximum is 350,000, uh, 350 million naira. Therefore, your decision will be to supply 350,000 units. So, you supply 350,000 units of cement. B3. You have to use the expected value. For better understanding, I have a separate video on expected value. And I also have videos on triple assessment, maximum, maximus, and minimus regret. I have a video on that. Go and watch it. So, expected value. Expected value is the product of probability times the profit or cash flows. So, when supply is 350,000, when supply is 350,000, when supply is 280,000, and when supply is 200,000, we want to determine the expected value. We have three different profits when supply is 350,000. We have 350,000, 270,000, and 65 I mean, million. 350 million, 270 million, and 65 million. 350 million, 270 million, and 65 million. Then, when supply is 280,000, you have different, three different profit 280 million. 280 million, 128 million. 280 million. 280 million. And 128 million. And when supply is 200,000 units, so we have to 200 million. 200 million. 200 million. And 200 million. Then you are given probability in those three states for good when it is 350,000, 280,000, and 200,000. 25%, 45%, and 30%. 25%, 45%, and 30 percent 25 percent 45 percent and 30 percent 25 percent 45 percent and 30 percent so what is the expected value 50 million times 25% plus 270 million times 45% plus 65 million times 30% that gives us 204 million six fifty thousand. The expected value under this is two hundred and four million six fifty thousand. For the for this one, you have two eighty million times twenty five percent plus. 
280 million times 45% plus 128 million times 30%. That gives us 234 million 400,000. 234 million 400,000. Then for the third one, you have 200 million times 25% plus 200 million times 45% plus 200 million times 30%. That is total, 200 million. So, for the third state, you have 200 million. So, using expected value, the highest is 234,400,000. This is the highest. So, your decision will be to supply 280,000. Supply 280,000 units using expected value. So, this is the end of my presentation on payoff table. My next presentation, I will deepen my explanation by providing further work example.